Coming up on UPH, Puncheritos, Kalupa, Chico de Gallo, Guacamole, and more on this episode of Unbelievable Power Hour. We are throwing a party in honor of your tremendous success. Place the device on the ground, then lie on your stomach with your arms at your sides. A party associate will arrive shortly to collect you for your party. Assume the party escort submission position or you will miss the party. everyone and welcome to episode 28 of Unbelievable Power Hour, your mind-blowing source for video game news, previews, and adventure. I'm Dan DeHaan and with me today is my gaming bro-pain tank, Aaron Chillin' Grill Weezinger. What up? I am putting a lot of work into these intros. <laughs> this is Aaron. I like your new broadcast <laughs> voice. I'm super excited. You want to know yeah. why? Why? I would. Because this weekend, what's happening? Harry Zinger is going to be stateside. We're going to call back. It's going to be BroFest 2014. Yeah. I'm stoked. I am too. We got, we got board games to play. We got food to stuff in our face. We got video games. What, what kind of soda do you want? Ray Cola. All right, I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> what kind of meat you want? Steak. Steak. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> There's going to be some ribeyes up in this joint. A <laughs> little, little bit of green on there. So you leave tomorrow morning. You're going to be mm -hmm. in Michigan. And Monday tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to be in Michigan for a couple weeks. Yeah. So that's sweet. Yeah, I'll be there from the, well, like the the nineteenth through the thirty first or the thirtieth. So, be nice. cool. Nice. I'm pumped. What else has been going time. on this week for you? Um, I'm on season three of Lost. Powering through those episodes, because man, you really you really do forget how many episodes there are in a season of Lost. And we were talking last week how. Man, they should have gone the way of cutting that down to like you know ten to twelve episodes, and yeah. they could have done that for sure. They do eventually cut it down to like fifteen episodes. Yeah, that would be but more appropriate. Not soon enough. <laughs> I like to imagine there's just twelve seasons of Lost. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, um, season eight of Lost. What? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's confusing. <laughs> Um, Still a good show, though. Yeah, yeah, I like it. There's just some episodes I'd just as soon not watch. But have yeah. you gotten to Nikki and Paolo yet? Nikki and Paolo. Are they are they main characters? Or are they just they annoying? They will be, and they'll be annoying. Uh, wait, is is not. Nikki blonde? Yeah. Paolo is. So, like they just randomly come in an episode and they try to become part of the crew. Yeah. Oh, hey, you guys go on adventures. Why can't we come? <laughs> yeah. That's them. <laughs> yeah. They meet their. I demise, figured though. they were just trying to like fill in some gaps from people dying or something. And that was a huge controversy. Yeah. It was very like very huge. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. And, and um. I gotta say one thing about video games before we talk about video games. Yeah. And that is, I just want to say thank you to the people who made the 360 controller so perfectly interoperable with Windows games. Perfectly like, interoperable. That's yeah. that should have been their slogan for the controller. <laughs> the Xbox. I think it is. 360. I think it is. It's perfectly interoperable. <laughs> <laughs> interoperable. Interoperable. <laughs> Opterable. <laughs> well, I, I do appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, 
I guess I'm I'm still amazed at things that work when you just plug it in. Like because I come from the generation of like printer ports and plugging it in, you got to restart the computer and like stuff usually doesn't just work as soon yeah, as you plug it in. You got to mess with it. They went into that game port on the back. Yeah. Of the computer. That, that was gross. awful. Yeah. But this, like, I was just playing Dishonored a little bit ago, and mid-game, I was like, you know what, this feels like it'd be better if I was using the controller. I wonder if it is fully compatible. I plug it in, two seconds later, the whole screen changes so that, like, oh, press A to do this now, and it's like a flawless transition yeah. mid-game to the controller. So, kudos to you. That's why PC's making a comeback. Yeah. That's great. It's a 360 controller. Yeah. yeah it really is. Yeah. Thanks, 360 controller. Anything, what about you, anything else? Oh, uh, you know what? That's I had yeah. last weekend was interesting for me. I I could never be a plumber. I will was say it? that. None my mom's none crack sump showing. pump. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> my mom's sump pump went out. Yeah. And it ended up turning into a game of you know time capsules. Yes. You know a time capsule. You you put yep. memorable stuff in there and then you bury it and then you uh. You uh, you know, bring it back up ten years later or whatever, just yeah. so you can have Reminence. a great moment of nostalgia. <laughs> well, you know what a sump pump does? Sump pump yep. is in a little like pit in your basement, and pump water goes sump. into it. It pumps the water out. So mm -hmm. her washer is hooked up to that thing. Went bad. So Danny comes down and's got to got to fix the sump pump, and. First of all, it's gross. Some pump water stinks. <laughs> yeah. There's sludge. There's yeah. like sludge that builds up. Is that and called sump? Like, why do they call it a sump? I don't. Pump? I don't know what a sump is. Yeah. Man, that's some tasty sump. There's <laughs> a lot of sump in that pit. <laughs> so then you have to get all the sludge out because otherwise it'll ruin the next sump pump. And. Uh, it turned into a game of time capsule where there were a lot of Danny's old toys in the pit, <laughs> all covered in muck. Those pits are creepy and gross. Yeah, there was like a little yeah. Muppets kind of doll thing that I played with. There yeah. were Hot Wheels. There was a disc to these old guns that you just load with these little plastic discs and shoot them. Yeah, yeah. And... It was just like, ah, P.U., that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to see this thing again. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Ruined. <laughs> I remember it being clean, though. <laughs> so it was your disgusting time capsule covered with sump. Yes. Yeah. It was sump capsule. So w it, did you fix it? Yeah, I did. I put it in a new yeah. one. Yeah, good now. Yeah. Into the pit. Some pump in the pit. <laughs> I've been thinking that all week. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you want to get to some gaming? Yeah. It's time for our weekly playlist, everyone. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is where we talk about the games we've been playing all week. Pretty simple concept. You're an idiot if you don't understand it. <laughs> don't insult our viewers. Come on. <laughs> so, Aaron, it. let's start with you, because I don't want to hear about Far Cry 3 again. Ever. Well, because that's all I've Unless been playing. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Um, I started playing Need a Hero, which is a Android game. And it's... At first, I thought it was going to be like another Match 3 Candy Crush-esque type game. Yeah. And you sort of go along this path, and um, I guess, I don't know, you're some hero, and you have to build up attacks by, um, like, it, it looks like one of the Match 3 games, and then you have to string together as many possible um, little, like, colored monster heads as you can. And the more of those you get, it fills up a power meter. Once your power meter hits full, then you swing and attack the en the enemy. Um, so then, like as you progress, I haven't gotten very far in it, 
but you get like magic books that do different uh, that will like explode and then destroy monster heads around it and then it fills up your meter faster. Um, so it's it's a pretty cool little diversion, I guess. Is, is this one of those games that is uh, in Korean? No. Okay. No. This is one of my American friends. W- I saw that he rated it, so I gave it a shot. Need a hero. What did he rate it? Five stars. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot of stars. Is he one of those people that just hand out five stars for anything he just sort of <laughs> likes? I don't think so. This is sort of enjoyable. So. Five stars. <laughs> See, I'm thinking maybe they give you something nice if you get a five star oh, review. That's that's what they need to start doing. They need to have some <laughs> buying them off. Like even Candy Crush Saga. You should right. get something for rating it. Yeah, hey, you get to play for another hour. Here you go. <laughs> I mean you do get like they give you stuff if you sign up through Facebook and stuff like that. Yeah. So have you played that Marvel match game that's on there? I think it's Marvel Avengers versus X Men or something. I don't know. No, no. no. I played about. it for a while. It's yeah. pretty good. Marvel like Quest or something like that. I don't mm. know. I sound like an idiot. <laughs> it's fine. But uh, it's a good game. I liked it. Yeah. For a match yeah. game. Yeah. Cool. And so need a hero. Yeah. I might need have to hero. try that out. Yeah. It's uh nothing too crazy, just match game, but a little different. Nice artwork. Yeah, actually, it's a really pretty looking game. Yeah, good. good. It's fancy. Now your so, next game um, I really want to hear about because I've got it in my Steam library. It's yeah, I haven't there. played it for very long. Uh, this week has been another bad week. Um, because you've been but playing I, Far I did Cry 3. because I've been playing Far Cry Three. No, um. So I started playing Dishonored. I picked it up with the Steam sale. I think we maybe both did. No. During the Steam sale? I got it okay. before. All right. Um, Another one of those things about the Steam sale, you know, that it's like they have the sales all the time. So the Steam, right. the summer sale is not as impactful. Right. I mean, I was just looking before the show, and it's like I feel like there are almost as many sales now as there were during the summer sale. So yeah. it's like, yeah. But, I still um, love the summer sale, though. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so this one is, I think it's Bethesda. Yes. Dishonored. Yes. They are very um, skilled in the making of high quality RPGs. And uh, they are also working on Pillars of Eternity right now. Yeah. Which Why? I is that coming out this year or next year? The end of this year. Nice. However, I think they might be a little late to the game with it because uh, Divinity Original Sin is kicking some butt right now. And What's everybody's that? talking about how, oh man, it's just like Baldur's Gate. <laughs> and it's amazing, and it's really good, and Pillars of Eternity is uh, unfortunately going to lose a little down of that. What? Yeah. I mean, it might be great. It might be really good, but it's going to have to be really good. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing it. Divinity. Yeah, I, I've i seen... Oh, it looks kind of cool. Yeah. That looks real nice. All hands on deck. Yeah. It's time to play um, some games. <laughs> so I, I played through maybe like 45 minutes of Dishonored. Mm-hmm. And so got through like the initial sort of tutorial stuff. And um, it's fun. Like there's... I haven't quite mastered the stealth aspect of it because I get caught a lot. Oh. And so it's a sneaky I, game. Yeah. And I've heard that they very much reward you for non-lethal kills. Oh. Non-lethal um, kills. Or, sorry, not non-lethal kills. Non-lethal takedowns. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. You're dead, um, not really. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> You just thought you were dead, but you're not. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so there's... um, Yeah, you, you sneak around, and like at this point I'm trying to get out of this like prison area, and uh, like the more people you kill, I guess there are rats that come. They didn't really explain at this point, and I haven't seen a big like negative to it. There's a plague in the city, and maybe like they're the plague carriers or something. Oh. But the more people you kill, the more rats start coming. And so 
it rewards you by doing non-lethal kills, and um, because then you don't get the plague. Because yeah, then the plague rats don't come in, and um, and yeah, I think you're you're rewarded with other things. It sounds like there's sort of a, a dark side points that you might get, as well as um, just like having a more favorable experience. Sans rats. So there's some sort of moral spectrum. Yeah. Seems that way. Um, so yeah, I, again, I haven't really played a whole lot of it. It it plays very well on my computer, thankfully. I'm kind of surprised. Um, which, that's another thing that I really appreciate about these high-spec games that can look really great, but they also give the option for those of us who maybe aren't so high-end to play it just as well. Maybe I mean the obviously the graphics aren't as nice, but um, but it's playable. Uh, are for you sure. speaking to uh, how thankful you are for PC gaming? Is that, is that yeah? What, and like uh, honestly, the I think it's changed a lot because it used to be like they would make a game and it's like, well, piss off if you don't have a sweet computer to play this because that's what you need. And now uh, they're changing it to like. Okay, like if you don't have the best computer, you can ratchet all these settings down, and you can still play it at like a good frame rate. It just won't look as pretty. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I look forward to playing that game because I like the stealth, and uh, I didn't even—I had no idea what it was about. I just saw it had really good reviews, and I was like, "I've got five dollars to burn." <laughs> yeah. So I picked it up on the sale. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 definitely looking forward to playing more of it. I'm sorry I didn't get more time in with it this week. You should be. I am. I apologize. I played some games this week. First yeah. game uh, that we'll just quickly talk about. I bet continuing Pushmo World. Pushmo has turned into um your Far Cry Three. No. Yeah, no. this is the third time. No, technically it's the second. The first Pushmo game was on the 3DS. This is a sequel. Come on. So it's like you talking about Far Cry 2 and then talking about Far Cry 3. They're completely different games. All right, I'll give you that. The only thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about something different than just Pushmo World. I played it, uh, you know, continuing to, but I just want to bring up my appreciation for off-screen play. Yeah. I do really like it. You know, I find myself doing it a lot. Yeah. Because uh, we'll be watching the booby tubey, mm -hmm. and you know it's just nice to have uh, that gamepad and be able to play while yeah. we're watching booby tubey. Yeah. So. So yeah. are are you doing that with like that game specifically, or with like a good uh, chunk of your library? Lately, it has been that game specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. I did it for NES Remix. <laughs> if I play a uh, little Earthbound. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'd do it then. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did it with Mario Kart, too. Yeah. You know, I'm just really start, starting to appreciate the off-screen play. That's cool. More and more. You know, we are really giving mad props to the game makers this week. Yeah. And people, in general. Yeah. Hey, people. Thanks for also being Also this here. week, this is a newer game on Steam, uh, Space Run. Mm-hmm. Really cool game. I like Never it a lot. It. It's kind of like a tower defense game a little bit. You have this ship, you're kind of a like a freight runner, like you take you take these packages, these loads and you ship them across space. Yeah. And on your route there will be pirates, there will be asteroids, all these types of things trying to prevent you from being able to, to deliver that payload. Mhm. Mm As you are flying through you start equipping your ship with different things. One, uh, the speed of your delivery counts, so you can equip it with more thrusters. You can yeah. equip it with more uh, defense um, weapons or defense systems, shields, all those kind of things. So mm -hmm. basically you have this, this, uh, this open, clean slate, and you can just start building this stuff as you're flying through the level. Yeah. I really enjoy it. There's a lot of upgrades. Uh, you know, once you complete complete a delivery, you can go in and upgrade your ship, and uh, you know, make your weapons somehow better. <clears throat> Excuse me, or yeah. um, upgrade your shields. All those kind of things. And I'm finding I really like it. I mean, it's not super intense, but it's fun. It looks like it though. 
Like, I'm looking at some of these screenshots from it, and, uh, like, with the shield bubbles all over the place, and, like, a ship just bristling with different, uh, I don't even know what they are, different modules, weapons, and... I think your ship gets bigger and bigger as you go along, but really, yeah. it's super simple. It's just, like, you're just paying attention to different things. Like, there's a... Along the bottom, there's there's kind of a line that shows you what you are pacing, what your pace is at, as far as uh, whether you're going to five star the mission, four star the mission. The stars are shown. Uh, all right, if you can catch up to this star here, this is how you can add an additional star to your score. So yeah. that's down there. So you're like, oh man, I better get another thruster going. Uh, yeah. And it's it's actually just really easy. Uh, it's not that hard. I mean, I just kind of put a little bit of thought. You get to place the packages on your ship where you put it mm -hmm. uh, to start the mission. And that's the kind of thing. That's it. It's just like you you just keep adding to the ship. It's select a weapon, select a shield, or select a, like an engine upgrade. Yeah. And it, it's pretty simple. So, yeah, don't let the screenshots fool you. It's, <laughs> it's really not that complicated. Cool. So. I, I really like this game. I, I think uh, it was on sale for ten bucks. I don't know if it still is. Okay, I was just but, gonna say it's fifteen bucks now. Yeah, um, I definitely recommend it. It it has gone on sale a few times, so I'd wait till it's on sale. Awesome. Another game I've been playing a bunch, and this is I've been playing on my Vita is Guacamelee. Yeah. I love gu Guacamelee. It it's a fun game. It's one that took me a long time to get into. I started playing it, and, you know, it's not a game starting out that you can just put 15 minutes in here and there. It's a game that you should give yourself a good hour to get going. Why is that? It's a little slow to get into what the game, to get an idea of what the game actually is. I yeah. just went into it knowing it was a platformer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, you're, you're a Mexican wrestler or a, a luchador. Mm -hmm. And uh, I jokingly say it's Nacho Libre the game. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like guacamole on the nachos. <laughs> but uh, it's a platformer. And you get a lot of... There's a lot of focus on um, combat. So you get yeah. a lot of wrestling moves that you unlock. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty brutal. I think it's similar, like someone stole a princess kind of thing is going on. I, okay. I've been s skipping through a lot of the uh, the game text. <laughs> just like <laughs> I just like playing. Stop talking. <laughs> but uh, the you... graphics are really nice too. Yeah, I really like the the style of this. Do you like unlock different wrestlers, or is it more about un like unlocking your powers? You can unlock different costumes. Been working mm -hmm. on how to say that because I say stumes. Stumes. Costumes. Costumes. <laughs> costumes. Uh, yeah, you can do that. You can unlock different ones. And uh, oh, I like the chicken one. You can yes. You can also <laughs> transform into a chicken. As you go nice. on, there are uh this goat man that you find, and uh -huh. he will unlock different special moves for you. And yeah. those special moves then end up playing a big part into the platforming and also into the exploration. Uh, so there will be barriers that you can get past once you learn these special moves and then go get maybe additional heart pieces or stamina. You have stamina yeah. for your special moves. And uh, it seriously has been brutal at times because there's a... Have you ever heard of the Gianna Sisters? Gianna it's a, Sisters? Yeah, it's a platforming game. No. But in that, there's this light and dark side that you switch between. Mm -hmm. And in Guacamelee, there's a similar thing. It's, it's the land of the living, land of the dead, and you switch between. And the platforming, uh, whether it's the walls or the platforms, those kind of things will change between the parallel universes. Uh -huh. And you have to do, you can do like wall, wall bounces or wall yeah. jumps. And you have to switch between both of them for the wall to be there. So you'll mm -hmm. bounce off of one wall into another universe. You have to quickly switch it so the wall appears on the other side 
and oh. just switch back and forth, back and <laughs> forth, and it is frustrating. But it's yeah. also very rewarding when you finally get through it. Yeah. Sounds like so, it would do quite a mind job on you, like switching back and forth. Yeah, it does to, like, because concentrate. You're you're doing. You'll go from a double jump, which is X, and mm-hmm. then into uh, you can do a like a jumping uppercut, which is then up and circle, and mm-hmm. then at the same time you have to switch the universes, and mm-hmm. then you might have to hold triangle to grab the wall, <laughs> and you have to do that like five times. Right, and it's like trying to get that right. It's it's like playing music, you know. It's like playing uh, chords. Right, right. Of a very complicated song. <laughs> you just have to memorize the sequence, right? Yeah, and do it right. Muscle memory. In the right rhythm, and yeah. So, it was for a second there that I actually felt, am I too old to play this? You had the like. The feeling maybe you were slowing down a little bit. Yeah, or... yeah. Like I wondered if I was. Yeah. Like, I started getting worried. Like, is this game that kind of complex, mm-hmm. or, or are my my reactions my, you know my. We joy. are past the uh, prime age for being pro gamers, so. Oh yeah. We don't oh, quite yeah. have it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, I think though, I think it's, you know, I think it's a tough game. I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. You know, like uh, Meat Boy is, uh, con- Meat Boy is probably way harder than this, but uh-huh. I think uh, Guacamole has some very difficult parts that I just need to Google and verify that I'm not just <laughs> getting a little long in the tooth. Because I've beaten the Mario games and really had very little struggle. Yeah, and I I would never watch you and play like, oh man, Dan's really losing it. (laughs) (laughs) What am I playing? He's getting up there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but at some point, I just wonder, um, it's just going to be like strategy games for me. Anything that, (laughs) you know, anything that requires like some sort of dexterity or anything like that. Right, right. No. So, uh... Not really, yet. that's been that's been it for the games this week. Yeah. Are you ready to move on to news? Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> okay, Aaron. Hey, Magic the Gathering. Yep. Hearthstone. Mhm. Face off. Do you think they're the same thing? Well, how do you how do they compare in your mind? No. Um they're not I mean they're both card games and I would say that's almost where the similarity stops in oh, We're going to have a little disagreement here. A lot of ways. Um I think Hearthstone has a much broader appeal. Um, I think A, because so many people know about World of Warcraft and it has a very uh, the aesthetic to it mm-hmm. is not like high fantasy like uh, Magic the Gathering so a lot of people maybe just like put off by that um, you mean the with, but, wait, which like, one is all, like Magic what, define high fantasy like elves and dwarves and like like more realistically styled paintings like on the card the card art the, itself i would say if you look at a magic card versus a hearthstone card like you'll find a lot of stylized characters in hearthstone oh well, i'd say that uh hearthstone not is all. High fantasy. not all but um i mean if we're going to break it down to dwarves and elves then it must uh, yeah be. i mean <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying. Like, I'd say Hearthstone is more cartoony. Yeah. Like, I, I, and when I think high fantasy art, I think like you know the. the I, I don't think like stylized cartoony art when I think like high fantasy stuff. Yeah, I, think, I, I know what you mean that way. Yeah. But I think, uh, I think technically, maybe the it is. Yeah. Characters and the in lore there. of Hearthstone would be high fantasy. Yeah. But. I would say that I disagree. I think um, essentially 
Hearthstone and Magic are the same. I think uh, Magic is definitely deeper. Mm-hmm. Why, why do you think that makes... Oh, I, all right, go I, ahead, sorry. I think if you take Magic, strip away a couple of components, you have Hearthstone. What would be, like, a, a core thing that you would take away and... Managing your mana. Mm-hmm. I think that basically they took that out of the equation. They're just like, hey, you you get one mana, one additional mana per turn. Right. I know it's not called mana in Hearthstone, but yeah. that's basically what they said. Let's let's this yeah. is the complicated part. Let's just get this out of the way. Mm-hmm. And but gameplay wise, it's pretty similar once you take that away. Yeah. I think where Hearthstone, a lot of the cards can focus on attacking other cards specifically, whereas Magic is more about like attacking the other player, and the other player decides more what to do. Um, you mean see, like I, who like, to block with or whether to... Yeah, uh, like I'm attacking with these guys, okay, then these are my blockers, and you go back and forth yeah, and figure out damage I, like that. Yeah, I I agree that way. I just think it's I mean that would be another like element that they simplified. Sure. You know, but I think just like it, it's Hearthstone was a let's take magic and make it more appealing to uh you know, a mass audience that might think magic is a little difficult to get into. Anyways, the reason we were having this conversation is because <laughs> uh Magic the Gathering, uh, Wizards Wizards of the Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh 20 15 Duels of the Planeswalker just came out, and they really don't see Hearthstone as a competitor. Um, they, you know, they recognize it's a TCG and a popular one at that, but uh, they feel like they're kind of going after different uh, customers. Yeah, I agree. See, I and I don't because I won't. I likely will not be playing uh, Magic. Mm-hmm. And I did. Right. And I, I think uh, I just I enjoy what Hearthstone is so much more. And to me, mm-hmm. it fills that same like desire to play a TCG game. Mm-hmm. But so do you think if Hearthstone wasn't there, then you'd be like, all right, I guess I'll give Magic a shot. No, I definitely would play Magic. I still, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna play Magic, but I probably right. won't play it as in depth as I did 2014. I played a lot of 2014. Yeah. Uh, and I'm specifically talking about the iPad version. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I played a little bit of the cards, but uh, I played more of the iPad version and yeah. uh, a lot more. And I think, uh, yeah, Hearthstone for me just like is the more of the experience that I want. It's mm-hmm. easier for me to find people to play with, yeah. uh, because, you know, uh, say Brittany, you know, she might like a little lighter TCG, and mm-hmm. so we'll play Hearthstone like crazy. We played a little bit of Magic, but so, yeah, I I just think I, I think there's definitely got to be some, there's gonna be some people that aren't gonna play Magic anymore, or, you know, maybe it wasn't quite, maybe it's a little too deep. I right. I think it's like. For me, it's the difference between right now, currently, Couriers and Marvel Dice Masters. Uh huh. They're at their fundamental, they're the same thing, but right. there's like deeper strategy in Marvel Dice Masters than there is for Couriers. Yeah, I think I I see what you're saying. Like I I just like personally I I don't really play Hearthstone that much anymore. I still like the game itself. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah. But I don't. I don't feel like I really want to play it anymore, but when I look at my magic cards, like, and maybe maybe it would be different if it was, like, uh, the digital version. Because I think, I think I'm more excited to play a physical game, like a oh, physical yeah. card game like that, than I am for just the digital counterpart um, that has much more appeal for me. And, there, you know, I, you're right. Like, a lot of the mechanics are, at its core, very similar um, but I, I do like the in, more in-depth strategy and a, a little bit different strategy um, in Magic than you get with, with Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And I think there is a difference between like 
I mean, for me, I mostly played the the iPad version, so mm -hmm. I think there is a difference though when you're playing with tangible cards and with someone right there. Yeah. I I, st I wonder if Hearthstone will actually do that at some point. I, I think it's kind of a missed opportunity if they. Yeah, I would be surprised if they don't. Yeah, because they do seem to do that with like a lot of their properties. With um, with, well, World of Warcraft has a, a TCG. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So. All right. So uh, moving on then, to the next story. Connectless debut of the Xbox has doubled sales. So which I'm sure has nothing to do with the Connect, uh, removal. Yeah. No. <laughs> we'll see. I, I think this is a good thing. Uh, just for, you know, from a perspective of games are going to get cheaper or there's going to be more bargains for us. Mm -hmm. They're going to start giving away better games. Uh, yeah. they're, you know, they're, they want to make those sales in the online. So they want the subscribers. And mm -hmm. uh, so I think we'll start benefiting that way. You know, having that parity between the consoles is a huge benefit for all of us. So yeah. I want to see them all neck and neck. Yeah. And the other thing that we'll start seeing is price drops. You know, uh, I would not be surprised if Sony has a price drop soon on the really? PlayStation. All right. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised yeah. if we see 50, 50 bucks off or something like that, you know, uh, sure. by Christmas. Yeah, or or really nice Christmas. bundles. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is a good thing. I, I yeah. think already, you know, I'm still not tempted to get an Xbox One. There's no <laughs> games coming out that make me want it. The yeah. weirdest thing is I'm more interested in the controller than, uh, yeah. <laughs> than the actual exactly. game. You know, that's what I was thinking earlier after I plugged in the 360. I was like, you know, if, I wonder if I would have the same or similar experience plugging in the, the Xbox One controller. Well, right now you should. Uh, yeah. with, because the drivers are native now, or they have uh, official drivers out for the Xbox One controller, so it should be the same. Uh, it's the same mapping. So yeah. that's really yeah. all it comes down to. And uh, game makers then put the, the assets in so that you can see the A button. You know, yeah. kind of thing or whatever. Well, when but, I get uh, yeah. the extra 60 bones to blow, maybe I'll have to swap this out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, they, I've seen it go on sale for like 40 bucks too, so yeah. wait for that. Cool. Yeah, and in other news, uh, Sony would like to, uh, to adopt the Wii owners that maybe missed out on some of the bigger consoles of last generation. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of a dumb goal. Yeah. I think this is really awkward of them. I it, would say that there might be a few gamers that were like, I don't want a 360 or a PS3. I want a Wii. Yeah. There might have been a few people that would have gotten a 360 or a PS3. And, yeah. But really, that big boom, it was like grandmas and stuff. I don't I mean, a bunch of yeah. the Wii. I don't remember many I don't know if I had any friends who just had the Wii and no yeah. other system. Like Did you I have mean, any no. grandmas that just had the Wii? Because no. that's what it was. <laughs> My friend's mom just had the Wii, and yeah, I mean that would I think fall into that category. Yeah. Um, Is she gonna buy a PS4 or an Xbox One? Doubt it. No, doubt she's not. It. No. Yeah, I mean it. They're saying all this. I feel like to try and cover up some laziness. Yeah. Because they oh we want to come on over we owners who like decided to skip seven years of console gaming and didn't have a PS3 or 360, and suddenly they're gonna have an interest in that. Like that doesn't make any sense. Uh, Sony Computer Entertainment President Andrew House was quoted as saying this, Our big opportunity is to welcome back an audience much earlier in the life cycle that possibly bought into the Wii previously. Our consumer data suggests some of those people are already coming in now, and that's what's contributing to the really great sales we've had. 
Yeah, I don't know about that. I think you need to check your data again. I would. <laughs> I highly doubt that most of those people only had a Wii. Yeah. I uh, I also like that he says, I hesitate to say this because I know committed gamers may roll their eyes about it. No, they are. They, they're definitely, we are rolling our eyes about it. And they, they use The Last of Us Remastered as an opportunity to bring them in. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's just like <laughs> what you would think of as a typical Wii owner and user is <laughs> playing The Last of Us. You know, after like three years of playing Wii Bowling, I just feel like playing a horror game set in the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. That's right no. up there. Nice try, Sony. Yeah. All right, last up on our uh, stories for the week. I think this, is, this isn't this is much news, but I think this is something really cool that Nintendo does. Uh, they don't have much of like an online subscription membership kind of thing going, but they do have a rewards club that is pretty darn good, if you ask mm-hmm. me. They just Can you tell me how you like join that club, or how does that work? You go to clubnintendo.com, and you can sign up there. And then what you start doing, you register your consoles or your handheld. And then any time that you get a game, those games come with codes. Okay. You can go to Club Nintendo, punch in that code, and then what it does is it adds coins to your reward bank. Okay. Once you get to a certain amount of coins, you can redeem them for games. Okay. I've gotten a buttload of games from this. Yeah. And and decent games. I mean, every month they put new games up that you can redeem for, and they'll do like a Wii U game, and we're talking like uh, virtual console games. Yeah. So I've gotten Mario Kart 64. I've gotten the original Zelda. You know, just a, a few different games. But now the other cool thing is, though, is if you spend enough money with Nintendo... At the end of the year, you can be a part of their elite club, Mm -hmm. and then they give out a really sweet prize to anyone that spent enough money that they're in the elite club. And they just released that list of games, Mm -hmm. uh, which includes Game & Wario, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, Dr. Luigi, Earthbound, uh, and Zelda 2 was in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, just a, a nice list of games that you can choose from. I think that's pretty awesome. I ended up getting a game, and I had a few of those. I would have gotten Earthbound if I didn't have that already. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had NES Remix on there that you could choose. So it it seemed like it's a ten to twenty dollar value. Yeah. You know, just for hey, you bought a bunch of games this year. Here's another free game, which that's, that's kind of cool. cool. Yeah. I ended up going with Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Nice. I had never played that back in the day, and uh, mm-hmm. seemed like a good one. And it was yeah. pretty much the most expensive game in the list too. For that. <laughs> yeah. But I think this is a kind of a cool thing that they're doing. A lot of people don't even realize that they do that, and they might buy Nintendo games for their 3DS or their Wii U, and uh, they could be getting credit for all these games. So well, I should enter in my codes because I have a 3DS that I buy games for. Nice. And your, you can enter your 3DS in as well. Cool. So that's it for uh, news for the week. It's uh, time to go on to our nerdy recommendation of the week. So, uh, this week's nerdy recommendation is a comic book. We've kind of been mixing it up all the time. Like, it's just like, I try to, I want to be organic with this. And so I was like, how do I encompass all of these things that we constantly recommend each week? Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of become the nerdy recommendation of the week. I like that. And I've, I've been reading a comic book this week that... I adore, and I've actually really enjoyed reading. It is called Black Science. Mm-hmm. There are around uh, seven issues, maybe eight issues out right now. It's they all like actively being made? Yes, it is actively being made. 
And they have uh, the first volume of a trade out right now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a mix between, do you remember the show Sliders? Yes. A little bit Sliders and mm -hmm. a little bit Fringe. Nice. And I'm talking like about some of the Parallel shows. Universe stuff. Yeah. And there's some story elements and stuff in there. It's about a scientist. And what he believes, what he proposes, he hypothesizes, <coughs> is that we may have not discovered the cures for all of these diseases like cancer and uh, anal fissures. Uh-huh. It's <laughs> a big one. <laughs> I don't know Cavern. if they have a cure for that or not. <laughs> but so. other parallel universes may have. Okay. So in this quest for finding cures for diseases, what he does is creates this device that he can jump universe to universe. And then we can find these uh, these cures that we don't yeah. have. Well, How does he I mean, pick the universe? Like, is it just sort of random that he? Uh... I think some of that might be unlocked more and more. But what ends up happening is, of course, everything goes haywire. Right. All right. It's the the mach machine is a uh, mm -hmm. and they start sliding, as they say in sliders. Right. From parallel universe to parallel universe. Mm-hmm. But it's way more sci-fi than that really low-budget show. <laughs> and it's way cool. Uh, I, I really recommend this book. It's a good book. It's, uh, I think, by Image. And yeah, uh, the art is fantastic in it. It, it has a little beautiful. bit of... It's like yeah. that old... Uh, what would you call like pulp, pulp comic? Is that right? Some of the artwork has that style. I would say it was like a mix between the old uh, pulp science books and yeah. like uh, Greg Capullo art. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. I, I've been hooked. So I've, I've subscribed to it and uh, going to start, start keeping up to date on it. Nice. That's uh, one thing that like, well, in a couple days, if any places are open, I would like to get down to a, a comic shop, a good shop that you know of, and pick up some, uh, pick some up a few copies books. of some some good books. Cause it's been a while. You should just buy a new iPad. Is what you should do. Yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money. So that brings us to the end of another episode, dude. All right. Man, we're coming. So, in uh, this is a little, a little short 50, episode this week. 50-minute mark. It was jam-packed <laughs> with goodness. Yeah. We make every second count. And since you only played, like, 30 minutes of games this week... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How was that Dishonored tutorial? It's a good tutorial, <laughs> <Super>. huh? <laughs> this has been Aaron's tutorial ratings. Yeah. <laughs> played another tutorial this week, and it's amazing. <laughs> It's time yeah, for some... weeks have been bad. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. It's Brofest. Brofest week. 2014. All right, everybody. You'll get, get your fill. You're not going to be on the show next week, too. So. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be traveling. Yeah. We'll have a fill-in. Filler. All right, time for closers and plugs, everybody. All right, so go ahead and email us about anything at podcast at uphshow.com. We're on Twitter. Who isn't? And our Twitter handle is at UPH Show. Uh, check out our Facebook. We are facebook.com slash UPH Show. There's this thing called iTunes, and we really want you to listen to our podcast and subscribe to our podcast via iTunes or Stitcher, but preferably iTunes, please. Get us you on iTunes. Yeah. And uh, we also have a Steam group called Unbelievable Power hour. I'm Dan DeHaan and I have a website, dandehan.com, and you can find me on Twitter at dandehan78. And my website is aaronweesinger.com. My Twitter handle is at aweesinger. And finally, please uh, check us out on YouTube. Our channel is youtube.com forward slash UPH show. You can subscribe to us, watch our videos. We've got some video game content up there, and we post this vidcast there. 
So please be a friend of the show and remember to like our videos. We thank you for watching and listening. Uh, And that's the end of the show. (laughs) There it is. (laughs) See you in two weeks. See y'all.